The Nakiri, the Japanese knife shape that probably gets the most attention from newcomers to the Japanese knife world. It is often mistaken as a meat cleaver when it in fact is meant to be used for vegetables. This nice tall blade gives you lots of travel when you're using that up and down push and or pull chopping motion. And this nice flat profile means that the majority of the edge is going to contact the board when you're using such a motion, thereby eliminating those little choo-choo trains of stuff stuck together, which can be super annoying. All right, before we start chopping things up with our Nakiri, we need to make sure our station is set up for success. First and foremost, we need to make sure our board is stationary. If you don't have these nice little rubber feet on the bottom of your board, a damp, damp paper towel or a damp cloth will do. Next, we need to make sure we have a damp towel on our station. This is super important. It's going to keep our station clean and wiped down and also going to keep our knife from rusting. This knife is stainless steel, so I won't have to, uh, to worry too, too much about it, but still good habit to get into making sure this knife is wiped down, dry and clean. Next, we need to make sure we have the proper receptacles for our unprocessed veg, processed veg waste. Next, we're going to grip our knife properly. We're going to do this by finding the balance point of our knife. The balance point of our knife is where we can hold it with one finger without it falling out of our hand. Our thumb is gonna go on the opposing side and our remaining fingers are going to wrap around the handle. Very similarly to how you would hold a drumstick, this grip is going to allow uh, maximum wrist action and keep our hand close to the tip of the knife, giving us more control over the entirety of the blade. Our left hand is super, super important. Uh, we're going to be using what's called a claw grip. Now, a lot of knife skills demos uh, that you've probably witnessed don't talk too much about the claw and its proper usage. And really what we're doing here is just choosing one of our fingers to use as a guide finger and keeping the rest of our fingers tucked behind that. Me personally, I feel more comfortable using my middle finger in the fleshy meaty part between my first and second knuckle. The rest of my fingers are gonna be used to keep ingredients together and pull my hand in towards those fingers before I have to rearrange everything and continue using my middle finger to guide the knife uh, through the vegetable that I'm cutting. All right guys, so let's start cutting up some stuff. The first uh, item we'll start with is the onion. One of the things I feel like that does not get talked enough about in knife skills classes is using the entirety of the blade and thinking about uh, pushing the knife away or towards us rather than pushing the knife in an up and down chopping motion. These knives are super, super sharp. If we simply push the knife away from us, we can allow the weight of the knife to simply pull itself through as we push the knife away from us, cutting through the uh, tip of the onion here. We're going to julienne this onion, so I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing with the root. And then I'm going to flip it on its flat side and cut through that root so I've cut the, cut the onion in half. Next, peel any remaining ugly skin. We're then going to set up our claw grip. And again, for me, I like to use my middle finger and in an up and down chopping motion, using a sort of pulling motion towards us as we go through, we're going to use our guide finger and slowly pull back towards the rest of our fingers to chop through this onion. Going up the mountain when we're chopping an onion is super easy and super safe, but once we get to about halfway, you'll notice that going down the mountain becomes very precarious. To avoid this, we are just gonna simply flip the onion over onto its other side and continue going up the mountain, chopping our onion quickly and safely. As you get more comfortable keeping the knife in contact with your finger, you'll be able to build up your speed, get your wrist action going, and just fly through onions in under a few seconds. Cool, so with the first half of our onion, we learned how to julienne. With the second half of our onion, we're going to learn how to dice. Now, this is going to be a perfect example of where the nakiri is slightly limited. Without the tip of our knife here, it can be a little bit difficult to, to dice an onion effectively. Typically, it can be a little tough to get the knife to go as close to the root as possible. So sometimes you may find that you end up with a little bit of waste dicing an onion with an akiri. With all that said, though, it's totally possible. And with a little bit of practice, you can get really good at dicing an onion with an akiri as well. Exactly the same as when we were julienning our onion, we want to try to use a motion that uh, incorporates as much of the length of the knife as possible. So when we're doing our, inc our incisions, uh, getting as close to the root as possible, we're still using a drawing motion in toward our body. This is gonna help us use as much of the edge of the knife as possible. 
Similarly, when we're doing our cross cuts and actually dicing our onion, instead of just pushing the knife straight down, we want to imagine pushing the knife away from us and allowing the length of the knife to draw itself through the onion and really maximize the sharpness of this blade. Now that we have our onion diced, we can use the flat spine of our knife to scrape our ingredients across the board, avoiding damaging the edge of our knife when doing so. You'll also find that the surface area of the nakiri makes it a great scoop and makes it really easy to move ingredients off your board and into receptacles. Next, to show just how strong a nakiri really is, we're going to chop up this butternut squash. You may have uh, come across in your research a lot of people who say do not cut up a, a butternut squash because it can be damaging to your knife. And while there is some truth to this, I would say it's mo mainly to do with how you're cutting an ingredient rather than what ingredient you're cutting that's going to damage your nakiri or any other Japanese knife for that matter. Of course, we want to stay away from hard woody things, uh, bones, shells, nuts, hard candies and stuff like that. But hard vegetables are totally uh, uh, within the capabilities of a nakiri. When we're cutting a hard vegetable like this, it's really, really important to make sure that you're not twisting or torquing the knife in any way. We'll finish by saying that thin knives like the nakiri are actually great for harder vegetables like this. As long as you're comfortable using it in the proper way, the thin and tall blade means that the edge geometry and that thinness of the blade is going to allow you to move through these harder ingredients with relative ease. We'll finish off by uh, going through some dill here. We talked at the beginning of the video about the Nakiri's flat edge profile, which is really good for that push and pull motion. But we'll finish off by just bringing attention to the fact that a lot of Nakiri's still do have a little bit of a curved profile to the blade, and especially towards the tip, they'll have a gradual curve there. This is gonna allow you to do a little bit of rocking on the board. You won't be able to get too, too much travel, but if you're doing a small amount of like dill in this circumstance, uh, you shouldn't have any issues doing a little bit of a rocking motion with the nakiri. Next, I'm just going to rip through a bunch of other vegetables that we have here. I've got some carrot and celery to finish off our mirepoix when we add it to the onion. The nakiri is a blast to use, and when you're just using it for vegetables, once you get comfortable with your finger and knife in contact with one another, and once you get that drumstick wrist action going, it really becomes a pleasure to use one of these things, uh, and it will really help you just fly through your veg prep. To summarize, the Nakiri is a great addition to anybody's knife kit. It is a very versatile knife, but it is lacking a little bit uh, in what it can do because of the lack of tip. Where it lacks in its versatility, it makes up for in its uh, awesomeness with regards to chopping vegetables. If you're looking just for a knife where you can julienne and rip through veggies super, super fast, the Nakiri is the knife for you. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel for more knife related content, and until the next video, stay sharp.